our first speaker opening up. It's always tough, so make sure you give a big round of applause because it's a big deal being the first speaker. When she's not watching football, she likes traveling and watching the Atlanta Braves. She's now been to nine ball fields, and by this weekend, there'll be 11 ball fields. Everyone, please welcome Allie. Perfect. Hi, everyone. I hey. uh, just want to thank Lander Analytics. Oh, no worries. Oh, perfect. Perfect, thank you. I want to thank Lander Analytics for putting on a great event here today and inviting me to speak. I want to thank my colleagues and my friends for being in attendance today. My name is Allie Blake. I am a senior coordinator of football data and analytics at the NFL League office. I have been there for about three seasons now, about to start my fourth season. And I'm going to talk some football with you all today and explain why we needed a game simulation model to generate new insights for the league. So first off, I'm going to start with an introduction of like what our team does and how we use data and analytics for football problems, along with what was the impetus and the reasoning behind why we needed a game simulation model, and then walk through the methods and the results. So a little bit about the football data and analytics team at the league. We are, our mission statement is to use data to ensure that football is the greatest competitive sport in the world. And we do this by presenting to various different stakeholders, football operations, officiating, replay, and we try to use an objective view on analyzing how the game is played and what's evolving in the game and what are those trends. We also analyze potential rules changes and we do this by supporting the competition committee every off season. We use um, data to give them insights on what would be the impact of a potential rules change on the game. And we try to leverage all the different trends and you know, what would be one thing that would change and how would that impact the game. And so the competition committee is a set of coaches, GMs, and owners who review all competitive aspects of the game and then they would push forth potential rules changes that would be sent to a vote at the annual meeting. And we want to have them be as informed as possible in terms of what type of information, when you change one rule, well, how does that affect the game? So the first kind of use case that came up was the NFL kickoff. So in 2024, there was a new dynamic kickoff that went into effect, and we wanted to understand with numbers and data-driven insights what would be the impact of moving the kickoff touchback line from the 25 to the 30 to the 35. And so we needed an end-to-end -end simulation model to show what would be the impact of one rule. So keeping everything else the same and changing just one input in that parameter, how would that affect the entire game? And so we needed like an ensemble of models, about three different types and a bunch of different various distributions to make this uh, happen. We needed to simulate at that play level and have artificial play-by-play -play data to then generate new insights because you know, at the NFL League office, we have different subsets of um, sizes of data compared to like the NBA or the MLB. We have only 272 games starting in, in regular season games in 2021. So we have to generate through a simulation model to generate these, um, what would look like a real game, but make that a simulated version. So this was an ensemble, and we had to use a lot of different bus business cases and logic here to make that happen. So I'm gonna walk through um, the kickoff because not only do we look at data at the league, but we also watch a lot of film to make sure that we are understanding what's happening in the data. So I'm gonna kind of give an a, a overview here. So this is a 2024 kickoff. Before 2024, this team that you see lined up on the 40 yard line uh, on white would get a running head start. So they would typically be running about 15 to 18 miles an hour. Um, and so the whole point of this new dynamic kickoff was to ensure that there were more returns and minimize injuries. And so I just wanted to walk through what this new kickoff looks like. So you see the, that no team is able to move until the ball is caught, and that's caught right around that end zone line where it said Seahawks. If that ball had got, gone a little further and not returned, that would be a kickoff touchback. And so in 2023, the touchback was a 25, and then this 2024, it was the 30. So when you move the touchback line to uh, five yards up, you're giving that possession team a little bit more of an, um, a head start in terms of where they started to where they're going. And that has an indirect impact on the game. And so not only do we report out these types of metrics and key stats week over week for 
our stakeholders at the league office, but we wanted to understand that indirect impact on the game. So looking over here on the right side, you see punt rate, touchdown rate, and field goal attempt rate. When you move a touchback lineup maybe five yards, you'd expect maybe punt rate to go down, field goal rate attempt to go up, and touchdown rate as well to go up. This is because that team's maybe more aggressive on fourth down given their field position, and you'd also have potentially more touchdowns and field goal rates just based on moving that game five yards, uh, the, the possession team five yards. The reason I bring up these, <laughs> these particular statistics is this is how we're gonna actually evaluate our game simulation model and use these metrics to see how the model is working. So I'm gonna start over, with, uh, start up top down with a method of how we build this game simulation model. So when you simulate an NFL game, you start with the first play being the kickoff. You have the R code running simulate drive, and it could end with two different outcomes. It could end with a scoring outcome and a non-scoring outcome. Each simulated drive you know, captures lots of various information, which I'll get into, and each of those scoring outcomes uh, changes how the possession team is scored, how um, the points are added, and even just how time's taken off the clock and how we move that back up into the next possession team. So if there's a scoring outcome and it's a touchdown, you go back up to a first play kickoff. And if, let's say, it's a non-scoring outcome and it's a turnover, you take the next team, we'll go and start iterating on that next drive here for simulated drive. So this is a very simplified version of what the game simulation model looks like because each of those outcomes has a different logic that you have to apply. So now I'm gonna get into that part where it said simulate drive right there <laughs> on that last slide and explain exactly what's kind of going on in that, in that simulate drive process and how the models were applied in all the different distributions. But before I begin, I wanted to give a big shout out to our football data analytics team at the league office, Tom Bliss, Mike Lopez, Andrew Patton, Ashani Desai, Kevin Hogan, because this was a a uh, group effort to decide what pieces and factors needed to be in this model to make sure that we were analyzing uh, everything appropriately and then when you're pulling it in at the play-by-play -play level, making sure that there wasn't anything we weren't considering or that you know, if we were to change a different parameter for a different use case, you know, what, what other information would we need? So let's say you start with a first down, first and 10 from a 25 yard line. Before you can even sample a play for your model, we needed a run versus pass model. And we used XGBoost here, and we had to use different factors that would go into uh, this run pass model. Because there are different behaviors that a team will do based on where they are on the field. So let's say it's first and 10 from the 25 yard line. That is very different than if a team is third and three, closer to, closer to scoring. And also, you know, if it's a, uh, uh, the possession team has a big lead, probably about 21 points, they may be more, uh, prone to run the ball and run out the clock. So there are these are all different factors. So time left in the game, down distance, yard line, and even just like point differential. If it's a close game versus if it's a blowout, that then affects that run pass model. And we had to do some validation to make sure that this is what we would expect to see in our game simulation based on what we actually observe in actual games. So now let's say we have first and 10 from the 25. We take a play chosen from an empirical distribution. We use a normal distribution based kind of like off that yard line, let's say it's a first and 10 from the 25, it could sample a play from the 26, the 24, maybe the 23, it just depends on that probability. And so that's what we would take and then you iterate over that multiple times. Let's say we convert, it goes back to first down, second, third, but let's say we get to fourth down. We would need a new decision model here for fourth down because there are three decisions that could happen. There could be a punt, you could go for it, or you could kick a field goal. And each of these requires different logic and different use cases, and we use the same type of factors that we included in our run pass, but we wanted that probability to make sense to give into where you are on the field. So kickers are getting better nowadays, but I don't think they can kick an 80 or 90 yard field goal. So in that kind of area, the probability for a punt would probably be around 90 to 100%. Let's say the game's in the fourth quarter and it's a tie game, they may be more prone to go for it on fourth down. So using those probabilities based on where on the field and time left um, had to be put into this random forest model. So if there is a punt, then you choose set from a punt plays that are also based on where they are on the field in an empirical distribution. And if they go for it, you're sampling from scrimmage plays from that empirical distribution. 
but if it is a field goal, we created a logistic regression model that we called our field goal and extra point model. And it was just purely a function of yards from own goal or yard line. And this is just because kickers are getting better. I think we had an 84% uh, make rate in field goals in 2024, and most of it was just a function of distance. And this simple logistic reg regression model got us exactly where we needed to be in terms of our field goal attempt make rate in our model. So now I wanted to walk through an example simulated drive here. Uh, the, the coolest part about this is this is all scrimmage plays from 2018 to 2023. So these are all different plays from different seasons, different teams, but these are real plays that have happened. So let's say we start this drive. It starts with play number one and goes down to play number seven here. Icon number one sh shows that it's a first and 10 from their own 25. This is a Saquon Barkley rush for four yards. This is actually when he was with the Giants and not the Super Bowl winning team, the Phil uh, Philadelphia Eagles this past year. Then we have a second and six. It's a Matt Ryan incomplete pass to Kyle Pitts, somebody from Atlanta. We know he's retired now. But this is all real data that's been being going through. And we have to make sure that these downs, these distances, and these yard lines continuously update as you sample and you simulate across one drive over a quarter, over a half, and over a game. So you can see this drive. You know, we have a Josh Allen pass to Stephon Diggs for 21 yards to have a new first and 10 from the 50 after a 21 yard gain. And you know you see that this ends up with a rushing touchdown of 14 yards at a second and 10 from the opponent's 14. Um, the only other thing I'd like to mention here is you can see this is like a good distribution of run versus pass. We see four, th four passes and three rushes. And so that's something we can continue to validate. I ran this like yesterday, put it in. So this is like really came from the simulation model. Before I go any farther and talk about like you know how we got to that game level, uh, we had to validate that this uh, data was accurate from a drive perspective. Before you even wanted to iterate over the half and over a game, you wanted to make sure that what, like these drives and these outcomes are what we expected. And so I would like to shout out our data engineering team at the league. Uh, this would not have been possible without them. I could run one game locally. It takes only about 20 seconds, but wanting to run 10,000 drive simulations, only, oh, we would have that run in parallel, and we could do that in only minutes. So how we validated the drive simulation. This was from, this is exact results that we had from that process. So a couple things, like I mentioned, we wanted to validate was our um, model pass heavy? Was it rush heavy? So we looked at the number of passes across all 10,000 simulations, not just like one drive, because you could have one drive that was more pass heavy than others. We wanted to make sure the clock was burning correctly. And, but the most important part was that drive outcome and being able to match that to each drive and see was the outcomes what we expected them to be, kind of with what was actually observed. So on this bottom chart here, you see 10,000 simulations of a single drive starting at the 30 yard line. The first row is what we actually simulated and the observed in the second row is 2,000 drives in the 2024 season that started at or near the 30 yard line. And we wanted these to be similar and like directionally the same, but these would not be exactly matching and they're not exactly apples to apples and I'll explain why. So for simulations, this was assuming it was a 0-0 game first quarter, first drive of the game. So you're not gonna have maybe as many turnover on downs. You're gonna have, like in the fourth quarter, maybe teams are more aggressive and going for it on fourth down. Um, they might be more tendent, have more of a tendency to punt in the first quarter. So we wanted these to be close, but like not like a 70 versus like 30 comparison here percentage. So what we see in that observed line is across all games, across all states of the game. And so we felt like these were a good enough to comparison to keep moving forward. So now I'm gonna walk through some of our results. So, like I said, we were comparing this to our real games. And so keeping everything else the same, we were able to create one simulated game, but then do that a thousand times. So three different scenarios are what we decided to do. So we had all kickoffs be touchbacks, and then the three different scenarios would be drive start at the 25 on kickoff, drive start at the 30, or drive start at the 35. And when you compare real games in the top box plot to what the 1,000 simulations at the 25-yard line are, we would expect those to be similar because we're using scrimmage plays from 2018 to 2023 where that touchback line 
was 25. We think that this was close enough, um, especially for a first pass, a, a game simulation model. We felt like the points per game here were lining up to where we'd expect a little high, but um, pretty happy with, with those results. And uh, the simulated results here suggest um, if you look at 25 to the 30 yard line here, that would be moving. That would be like, okay, so if we keep everything else the same and just change from the 25 to the 30, how would that affect points per game? Because when you're sampling at that, at that uh, play level, you're able to generate these, this new data. And so when you move from a 25 to the 30, you see a 2.2 points per game increase between the 25 and the 30, which I would like to share why that's so significant. It's because in 2023 to 2024, when we switched the kickoff from the touchback line from the 25 to the 30, we actually saw around a 2.3 points per game increase in our, all our games across that season. So our simulation model was picking up that, that same similar increase. Um, we also did this for the 35-yard line, which is what this 2025 season touchback line will be. And so as this was a first pass at our first game simulation model, uh, we were pleased with these results and looking forward to use this for future use cases. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to chat with me in the back. Thank you.